Now, to summarize this whole test creation experience, remember that to make a test, you have to go to the content area you want the test to be located at and go to assessments and then test to make a new test. When you do that, it's a bit counterintuitive because you're going to see we don't have any actual tests in this window that says existing and that freaks people out. This is because this area is for tests that exist in limbo and we're going to show you what that actually means in a second here. So because we're doing a new test, I'm going to go over to create new test and hit create. We give it a name so new test test a description and some instructions now when we hit submit you're going to see this page here where you can now add a list of questions if you do not click ok we'll go ahead and click ok now even though we hit OK after we've added our questions, our test is not actually deployed anywhere yet. It's still in this testing limbo. So to then go back and again say, look, I want to take this test and put it into a content area. We now go back here uh, for our test and then click on Submit a second time. And this second time, we now have the option of choosing our description again. And we can choose if we want to show the description or the instructions. And note how we cannot, I mean, we can change the description, but we can't change the instructions at this point, which is kind of dumb. But we do have the option of doing or showing the description and instructions to our users, which I don't know why you would not, but if you didn't, then this is why. And our availability, our attempts, Force completion, backtracking, adaptive release, password, due dates, assessments, so on and so forth. So this is where you now get all of the options that actually create the variables with, with which your test can be taken. Now, when we hit submit again, this is when the test is actually deployed to our content area. And if that seems stupid, then you're right, because it kind of is. Now, once you actually have your test in your content area, and remember, if it's dark gray, it's not available. And if it's not grayed out, it is visible. You go to your test, and you come over here to the little circle just past its name. And if you want to edit the test options, like the password, backtracking, the number of questions asked and overall layout, you go to test options. To add additional questions or edit existing questions, you go to edit the test. And when you come back under edit the test to this window here where we can now create all kinds of questions except for opinion scale Likert. These are reserved just for surveys and should not be used in a, que or in a test environment because there are no right or wrong answers for opinions. You also have the option over here to reuse questions, either uh, from a set or you can create a new block. And then if you want to change the default point value of questions or enable the possibility of individualized feedback for each type of answer, you go over to question settings. Now, when you create a question or you edit a question, if you do not hit OK, that, you know, those changes are saved but they put your test back in that test limbo area so you then have to go to that test again and then basically open it and then once you go down here and hit OK this is what actually takes it out of test limbo and puts it back to your original insertion point like so so it, it seems kind of messy and honestly it is but once you understand how the workflow operates it's it's pretty straightforward at that point i guess because you've you've learned it the nuances you also have an additional feature which you know one of the reasons that makes blackboard so complex is you have multiple ways of doing the same thing so if you cannot find this test and you have to edit it and it is not in test limbo you can go to your control panel under the grade center full grade center and for all of your content items that have a point value, you're going to see that name as a column over here. And if you're going to notice, next to each name, we have this little circle here. So for example, let's go over to our new test test. 
If I come over to this column and click on this circle, we have the option within here of editing our test directly. So we can jump to our test within Grade Center if we don't want to figure out where it's hiding in our course shell in case we forgot. And you can do this for every assignment that you have. So you can edit the test right from the Grade Center and it makes it super easy to find things in case they get lost. And then for whatever reason, if you don't like the name that it appears as within the column, you can go over here to Edit Column Information under the column you're going to edit. And this is where you can choose a new display name that will only appear in the Grade Center. So regardless of what you end up changing the item name to, it will preserve this unique name that you give it and a description as well. And again, you can choose to display the scores as a score, letter, text, or percentage. And you can always change these settings on the fly. And to reiterate, if you have a test and you want to change its options like the password, backtracking, description, all of that, you go to your test in your content area and you click on this little circle and you go to edit test options. If you're making new questions or editing current questions, you go to edit test. When you are, and if you, and if you do not see your test because you didn't save it when you made a change and so now it's in test limbo, you can just go back to assessments in any content area, so the assessments tab, click on test, and then you'll see that test in this area here. And Blackboard does remember where you last submitted it, so you don't have to go back and try to re-insert it someplace. So that property is, is preserved. And then once you are actually editing the test for adding new questions, so I'm going to go over here, edit test. Let's say I changed my mind and I decide, you know what, I do want to actually prohibit backtracking or enable backtracking. Well, you can do that right within here. So right at the top is our test example. And we have this little circle here where we can go to edit. And for editing, we can edit the name, the description, and the instructions this way. So this is how you would edit those two properties after the fact if you can't do it anywhere else. And hit submit. And then again, our test here, go back here, modify options, modify options now within this particular pop-up menu is where you go into enabling things like password, backtracking, content link descriptions, so on and so forth. And you're going to see that they will preserve the descriptions and instructions you've set in the previous tab. So that part can be kind of confusing, but this is essentially where everything is located, and it's all going to be here somewhere. I'm going to go ahead and hit cancel for now and not save it. And again, because I made a change to my description, I have to come down to the bottom and click OK down here. Otherwise, the test will be in that testing limbo like I've been talking about.